My name is Laurel Carangelo. I'm a therapist with the Center for Community Resilience After Trauma, and I'm a mom of a four and six year old kid. I'm a white mom with two white kids. I'm also an organizer with Western Mass Surge Families. Um, this is a letter that came to Embrace Race from Amy in Pennsylvania. She wrote, I'm white, and though I call out racism in front of my children when I see it, I've been hesitant when it comes to calling out friends and relatives that they hold in high esteem. I wonder if it's too much for them to handle, and I don't want to change their relationships that, that with those, pers those people. How should I approach this? I love this question because one thing that it acknowledges is how important it is for us as white parents to show our children that we're willing to challenge when we hear racist ideas and we hear ideas that you know could be leading to you know Flint, Michigan being ignored. We're hearing ideas that could lead to um, black people being murdered by police. We're hearing ideas that could le lead to people thinking it's okay to separate immigrant families, and and we're saying. We're saying, um, no, we're not gonna let these ideas just go by. And, um, and I also love this letter because it's acknowledging that the hardest time to do that is with the people that we respect and care about most, our most deepest relationships, because it just comes back to kind of everything, um, everything that we struggle with in our deepest relationships, how we deal with conflict, how we position ourselves as white in the world. And it, it gives us this opportunity to think about what do we want to model for our children. And for me as a white mom, one of the most important things I want to model is being okay, being uncomfortable, sticking with a process even if I'm uncomfortable. So for instance, you know, if, if something comes up that I hear that is an idea that would perpetuate a lot of racist systems, you know, I can say to my kids later like, wow, I really wanted to say something, but in the moment I didn't really know what to say. Um, and then I can say, I can sort of walk them through the process and be a model for them. Um, and that can build, I think, in them the kind of muscle that can allow them to say, when I'm uncomfortable, I don't have to have a, like a fight or flight response. I don't have to have this sort of white fragility response where I get out of the situation and stop engaging. I can stay with it. Um, you know, in the best case scenario, it can build the kind of kids that, you know, would stay with Tamir Rice in the park and be a white kid that the police would see and then maybe would not have uh, resulted in Tamir Rice being killed. Um, that's a really dramatic example. I mean, on a more um, sort of day-to-day -day example, maybe it could raise a kid that could hear from their friend of color that a teacher was targeting them, was giving them a detention and not giving other kids attentions, and would um, make the kid be like, even though they might, the white kid might feel uncomfortable, be like, huh, you know, I can, I can see how that could be true and could like walk with them to um, a teacher that they trust to talk about it. You know, it builds, it builds that kind of um, ability to be thrown off as a white person and then come back and connect. And, um, and I love this question because it just, um, it calls to us as white people to really, um, to call on, you know, what our, what our values are, what we care about. And, um, and on our, in our most deepest relationships, in the most deepest places. I'm thinking about the Embrace Race webinar, webinar by Allison Briscoe Smith that I was really moved by when she just talked about how the conversations with, about race and racism should just flow through all of our daily lives. And, um, and that the way that we approach them will have to do with what our values are as parents and other aspects of our life as well. And, um, and I think for me, the holding the discomfort and um, being compassionate with ourselves um, while also always challenging ourselves to be really brave so we can raise kids that can challenge systems that are really cruel and racist. Um, my name is Laurel Carangelo. I'm here in Western Massachusetts and I embrace race.